Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've been to an auction, and uh, as we can see, there's not much room left to the bump stop. We're pretty full. So, let's see what we got. Lots of cheap garbage boxes this time. Um, maybe lots of stuff for the scrapyard, but we'll see. Got some more stuff here. The trolley is mine. But uh, yeah, we're pretty well loaded. Let's look into the boxes. Well, that's another one of our auctions course. The auction actually talked me into a pay to quit, which is about it's just under three dollars. Um, yeah, it's an old bus box, but the good thing is it appears to be really powerful. It says 3.2 kilowatts, so that's about the max you can pull out of a normal plug here in the UK. Uh, considering how it looks like, I'd rather pull the cover and have a quick look inside. But uh, the transformer is very heavy, so I think the duty cycle is quite good, and I think. Unfortunately, everything is. You can't read it anymore. It says something there. It does. 80 amps continuous, and then it says intermittent. But no particular duty cycle here. Uh, that's about what I can read here. It's considerably heavier than my <laughs> other one, which I got cheaply on an auction as well. Uh, let's have a quick look inside and uh, see how it looks like, and then we fire it up. I'm surprised. Apart from an awful lot of dust, the transformer looks okay. No burnt windings. It's just dusty and the spindle needs a bit of oil because it's hard to move it and obviously blow the dust out. Some corrosion on the switch here. We'll see if it works or not. Someone fitted a new... Uh, something, something was burning here. Look at that. That's neat. That needs a dressing here. Uh, yeah, I think it was... Yeah. Look at that, the one pole of the switch died and apparently they just put it together with some uh, uh, thermal block. And we can also see here that went hot. So there was probably or is probably a poor contact. That needs looking at, but apart from that bit of a clean, sorting that wiring thing out here, that's a thermal switch, yeah that switch, well, wait, wait. maybe maybe we're gonna replace that switch at some point, but uh, yeah, it looks in pretty much original state, all right let's blow the dust out, so we gave it a bit of a clean and it looks surprisingly good actually, it's just the metal parts is a bit rusty and I just noticed the other pole of the switch doesn't work either so we need to replace the switch because it will be always powered these uh, the current setting on these cheap bus boxes is, is just basically done by a by changing the loss of the transformer with this uh, spindle here so if you wind it in the losses go higher and the transformer gets softer and so the voltage is dropping down much more and uh, if you wind it out it's the other way around if you keep if you grease it a little bit or just put some oil on or whatever just uh, make sure it's sliding okay um, that's it there's no secrets in these machines and that little white thing is actually just mounted to, to the to the slider, and that indicates to the, roughly the current you set to. 
uh, you can bend that to your, to your liking. Uh, okay, I think it's fairly safe to turn it on. And uh, let's plug it in. Well, we need to change the plastic spacers, I think, and also that bolt here. I don't like that. It went really hot, so that's not good contact anymore. So we changed the whole bolt. But apart from that, yeah, it looks tatty, but I don't care. As long as it works, there's no reason why it shouldn't work because the transformer looks very good. Once the dust is out. Okay, let's try it out. Apparently the transformer is working. It's rattling a little bit. Uh, maybe we need to tighten the bolts a little bit when it stops rattling. We've got 44 volts idle which sounds about right to me. I didn't check the current, but the fuse is not blowing. So, let's do some welding. Get some gloss first. If you test a welder which you don't know what it is, always make sure you wear gloves, because it may... I need a few more amps. I don't know where the amps are. I have no idea because the cover isn't there. Um, it's probably a bit low on amps. Maybe only 60, 70 amps. I don't know, because I have no idea the problem is the white thing here is the amps and I just wind it out a little bit more don't know where I am the next problem is <coughs> that this yeah the bolt is getting warm so we're losing a lot of um, voltage here so we need to replace that bolt that's the reason why it doesn't weld very nice let's try it again and just crank the amps up a little bit Doing all right. Okay. So, but yeah, we can we can feel the bolt is pretty warm here. So, we'll replace that bolt. Look at the other one as well. And uh, then we've got a working welder. All right. The problem is um, this is essentially a resistor. So you have thick cables which are very nice actually, nice thick welding cables. Um, but you lose a lot of energy here. So you crank the amps up, but you don't get it because this is just a big resistor. So replace the bolt with a new one. So this doesn't get hot anymore. Yeah, this is, this is cold, the other one is hot. So hot bolt means we lose energy, which we actually want at the welding point. Uh, yeah, not unhappy for the price. <laughs> so we finally got it out. What we do is we're gonna fit one of these 200 amp density plugs because all my machines got a 200 amp 25 square millimeter um, connectors so I can use the stuff between all the machines. All you need to do is filing that notch, just use a file, file that notch and then uh, the thing slips in and it doesn't rotate. We do it on the other side as well because it looks bad as well. The bolt is completely corroded. Uh, we need to see how we get that off. And then it just goes on the back with the uh, bolt washer. The big nut holds it. The big nut holds it. And, just, uh, and then just bolt and washer the cable in, job done, easy and uh, you don't need to carry around all the cables fixed to the machine um, which is a good thing, I like that so I can have the machine on the trolley and use the cable when I need it. 
Anyway, let's fit that and uh, we'll come back when we do the, other, the rest of it. So, we're done. Inside here. And same here. I don't know if it's visible. Alright, we need to sort that switch. And uh, then we should be good to go. At least uh, for now. Anyway, let's find a switch. So, we got the new switch fitted. Looks a bit different, but that was the cheapest one I could get. It's actually a 20 amps three phase switch. We only use two poles of it. Um, we connect the ground correctly because it wasn't really connected before. Uh, I probably put a bit of tape over here just in case something comes loose it doesn't touch it. Uh, and that's the old switch. Looks a bit unbrunned, so that's okay for the scrap bin. But uh, yeah, we know it's working. We're gonna test it later on, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's working. So we give our fresh repaired welder a little test here. Um, we got a 3.2 millimeter 6013, and uh, we'll weld it already with it and see what it does. As we can see, the light is working as well, so we wired it correctly. Let's see what it does. Here. All right, we do it a little bit more amps. So it says hundred and ten hundred fifteen eventually. So something is getting warm here. I think it's that clump here. I smell some rubber. Who knows what a, what is on that thing? Yeah, it, apparently it welds. Let's do a few more beats and uh, see how it works. The amperage makes sense, so. It's about right for that electrode. Get me a new one and give it another try. It should need a little click of paint, but I don't really care. As long as it works, we put the sockets so I can use the normal ones. I half around, put the cover back on, maybe we'll paint it at some point, but not today. And uh, let's call it a job done on the welder. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.